Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hi guys and welcome to today's episode. If you recall a while back, probably about a month or two ago, I bought a 1940s Daimler DE27 limousine. Uh, we believe it was owned by the royal family at some point. Not that matters a whole lot, but it's kind of cool. Um, the car had been sitting since 1989 in this warehouse behind me here. This is the first time it has seen daylight since 89. That's a long time. <laughs> And here it is. Um, it was parked originally. Um, it was purchased and used as a wedding car, which no, no wonder. I mean, it looks like a wedding car. It's painted white and everything. Uh, and I guess it was on site at a wedding. The chauffeur opened the driver's door. The wind caught it and it blew back and created some damage. Um, they never did fix it. That's the only reason why that car was parked. Otherwise, it was a running, driving vehicle. And I talked to a fellow um, about a week or two ago, and he says he remembers seeing this car on the road back in the day, you know, driving around to weddings and uh, taking people all around town. So I bought it as a project. Don't ask me why I bought it. I don't really, I don't know. I guess I thought it was kind of cool looking, because it is. But I bought this car as a project car. Um, my goal here is really simple. I just want to get it running. Uh, I want to get it running. I want to get it driving. Um, I want to get the uh, door fixed on the other side so that it'll actually latch. These ones latch okay. The damage is on the other side, which I'll show you here. This is the damage that caused the car to get parked. It pulled the hinge. Look at the gap. You know, you have a gapping problem on your door when you can stick your whole hand inside of it. That is in the closed position right now. Um, this hand hinge got bent out really badly. You can see it's pulled away uh, by probably about a half an inch there. I'm gonna try and pull this door off, realign it, get the trim all put back on, and uh, see if I can't make this thing a usable vehicle again. And I seem to have accidentally locked the door. There we go. <laughs> so it latches somewhat. Um, this is kind of a unique vehicle because it was uh, coach built, custom coach built by, right there, Windovers. And there weren't very many of these made. Um, the original color on this car was black. And it looks like it had maybe like a green sort of pinstripe or detail here. Kind of see that under the paint? That little faint line of green. Hard to say. Actually, you know, that looks like the... I was told the car was black, but that almost, that really does look like a um, purple. And uh, purple is, yeah, that is, that's burgundy. Burgundy is the royal tour car color. So I mean, that lines up a little bit better than the black, but I can see burgundy paint underneath there. Either way, it was repainted at some point. Um, it's not rusty in the least. Um, it's got a tiny little bit of bubbling on the lower fender, but that's about it. You know, all in all, this car is extremely solid. The interior is in lovely condition. Those Connolly leather hides are still in great shape. Headliner's good, no signs of any water damage. The back is all good. So, <laughs> you know, all things said, when you look at the sum of a car and you, and you get down to, a, you know, this one section is the problem. It's not that bad. Um, I'm just hoping it can be mended and uh, there's gonna need to be some serious restoration work done on the wood. So this is today's project is to uh, get this home, probably try and get a battery in it, I guess, and see, does it even turn over? Check the, check the fuel in it, see what kind of shape the fuel's in. Love these big, bulky, bulbous frog eye. These are Lucas uh, P100s, I believe. The same headlight that they actually used on the uh, Austin Shear lines and the Jag XKSS. Uh, basically like a really stunning, these are a knockout headlight. Um, you know, I don't want any damage to happen because the headlights are probably worth half of the value of the car, which is surprising. <coughs> well, maybe not half the value of the car, but they're expensive anyway. But look, the uh, now that we have it out in the daylight, 
it looks like at some point this chrome must have been redone because there's not a single pit or concern whatsoever with this chrome. It's all in perfect condition. I am missing a mirror off the other side, but that should be pretty easy to replace because the mirror is just a single bolt on. If I'm lucky, maybe it's in the trunk somewhere. We'll go through it once we get it home. I'm just waiting on the tow truck driver to arrive right now with the flat deck, and then we can get this bad boy out of here. And uh, in its new home, my home. Hey, the driver has ratcheted through. Luckily these have pop out windows. So you'd actually pop it out, put the strap around it and tighten up, put a rag there so it doesn't cause any more damage. Get the truck backed up now and we should be on our way before too long. She's all loaded up. Now the drive home. We'll see who gets there first, me or him. I guess I could zoom out a bit. The car is home. As you saw, I got it loaded in. Brought a trickle charger to put on the battery. But as I'm opening the hood up here, ugh, good grief, that has to be the heaviest. That's aluminum. It's gotta be one of the heaviest aluminum chunks. It's like, aircraft thickness. As I was looking under the hood, lots of room in there, but no sign of a battery. Now, I don't have an owner's manual for this vehicle, but that's okay, because if memory serves, which it did, um, I used to have an MGTD, also a British vehicle. And where did they put the battery in an MG? Well, they put it underneath the seat. So I checked underneath the front seat. There was nothing there. Checked underneath the back seat. Can you imagine? Oi, uh, don't mind me, Queenie. I just go to charge the old battery. And she'd be like, oh. <laughs> it was like an in inconvenient place. If the queen is watching this, <laughs> I'm sure you don't laugh like that. Maybe you do. Anyway, look, I found it. And I look at this gargantuan battery tree that this thing is sitting in. That's a 12 volt battery, which is a little bit odd to me because uh, 1940s vehicle, you'd think it would be six volt, um, but it is possible that they had multiple six volt batteries in that space. Cause it, that tray is big enough to hold probably three 12 volt batteries in a row. I don't know what they think they're trying to charge up here, but uh, the battery doesn't look even terribly old. I know the guy I bought it from said that they were, uh, that he dropped a battery in it. And although it hasn't uh, run in many years, um, they did put a battery in. So we're gonna maybe see if that thing even holds a charge. But 12 volt is kind of screwing me up a little bit. I would have thought it was six, but then uh, look at the uh, alternator here, 12 volt. So I think what happened was, see there's a new coil. Somebody's bypassed the old coil. I think it's been switched over to a 12 volt system. I will find out. I'm gonna put a, uh, I'm gonna put the trickle charger on there, and we'll let that sit for a while and see if we get any kind of. Uh, maybe I'll bring over the bigger charger. Heck, let's do this upright. I'm gonna bring over the bigger charger. We'll get that set on there. See if we get any kind of juice into that thing. If not, I do have a, a fairly fresh battery that may hold the charge. So we'll give that a try. Okay, it's hooked up. Not feeling super optimistic that uh, it's gonna take much of a charge, but it is climbing a little bit. We'll see how far we can get. All I wanna do basically is just see if, I'm not gonna try and start it. I just wanna see if it cranks, because if it cranks, there's hope. And where there's hope, there will soon be gasoline. And when you have gasoline and hope, 
you, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't know where I'm going with this analogy, but I'm hoping that this thing will maybe start. Uh, I should probably also check my brake fluid, see if there's any fluid even in there. Mm, well, it's a little murky, but well, there is fluid in there. Definitely change that out though. What does it say? Lose, you, use Luvax chassis oil. Well, that ought to be fun to find at my local hardware store. <laughs> huh. Good thing is at least it looks like there's kind of a more recent uh, lead wire on the coil and the plug wires don't look too bad. I should put a little bit of oil down each cylinder just to free up the rings so that I don't have any, um, well, if it is stuck, which I don't, I don't think it, well, the fan's not stuck, but I don't see the motor turning. I'll put a little oil in there too before I crank it over just to make sure that it uh, has a chance to lubricate the piston rings a bit too. I was doing a little sleuthing, AKA snooping through the car. And the story of this vehicle goes, um, I'm told it was a Royal Tour car which might be likely. Um, I mean, these were used by the royal family and it was the royal shade of burgundy. Um, but I'm told that it was used later as a wedding car, wedding white. And that uh, around 89 or 90, the chauffeur had the door blow open in the wind, it screwed it all up and that's why they parked it. So in the pocket, we have this. The St. Albert Gazette from July 29th, 1990, July, nice time of the year to maybe get married, a Sunday, a day that family would have off. So maybe, let's see. And we have this, four girls, pick up four girls at Gatewood Avenue and uh, it's going to St. Albert, Alberta United Church uh, to the Glendale Golf and Country Club. So going to St. Albert and uh, four girls. Well, heck, that can go into a church. That sounds wedding-like to me. So could it be that the final paperwork from this vehicle, chauffeur had a sore throat. It's, there's black licorice lozenges in here. So he's already having a bad day. Travel vans. Oh, Prestige Limousines. That's who used to own the vehicle prior to me. And you know it's an old business car because it doesn't have the area code in front of it. Who's your driver? Wally. Wally's the driver, number 856. I wonder if Wally's still alive. Sad to say, not likely. So there we go, Wally. He's headed to a country club in St. Albert. He's got a sore throat, so he's already not feeling his best. <coughs> Maybe he's weakened by his cold he had. So when the wind catches the door, he's already having not a great day. And then the wind blows the door off. Crystal Plamondon. And were they listening to tunes? Charlie Bird and Lorindo Almeida, that's jazz. He was listening to some sweet jazz <coughs> in this cassette deck and he didn't trust the wiring they redid because there's a fire extinguisher right here. Or I guess in those days, somebody could have been smoking in the back and you'd have to go and douse them. <coughs> so he's got, looks like there's some blues on this one. So he's into blues and jazz. He's had a Coca-Cola did he win anything? Anything? Let's see. It says, look under the cap and see if you won. Let's see if he wins anything under here. Never even flipped it over. Let's flip it over and see if this was a winner. Well, it was 10 points. Expires September 30th, 1990. Might be a little past that one for the dream auction, which I guess was not his dream. There's still some matches in here. Okay, generic junk. Let's see, when's this coin from? Key for something. When's the nickel from? 
1979. Well, this all seems to check out. The bottle cap and everything that this car was indeed parked in 1990 after a failed wedding. I wonder, how, I wonder if he even made it there to the Country Club Golf Course. I could see that being windy. That is what ruined a vehicle. I'm just going to make sure that's in the off position as I'm charging this. Just also make sure it's in neutral too. Don't accidentally crank it and then it does something. It looks like this switch has a few different positions. So there's off. Oh, that's probably going to be your headlights actually. So that would go on and then that's likely your starter button. Which of course isn't doing anything right now. We'll let that charge up and we'll see if it if it does anything at all. So update, it's gotten up to 39%, which is miraculous, but I shouldn't have expected a battery potentially as old as this to do anything at all. Uh, it was worth a try though, right? Um, so I'm gonna pull that battery out and run into town and grab a new battery. Turn that off, because that's pointless now. We'll grab a new battery and see, I don't have lights or anything, even at the 39% that is reading, I'm not getting any kind of electricity at all in the vehicle. Um, so we're gonna take that out, go get a new battery. Well, there's my problem. The fellow said it was a newer battery. Newer, as in uh, nine years ago. Nine years is a long time to have a battery sit. And uh, since it didn't do much nine years ago, I'm guessing it's not gonna do much now. Uh, so I'm gonna take that in, use it as a core, throw a new battery in and really hope that there's not too much wrong with this old boat. Okay, got the old battery. I'm bringing it back for a core charge. They usually give you a little bit of money back for that. Got my new battery right here. Picked it up at good old Costco. And it should be enough. That's a big engine. So I got one of 700 cranking amps. Should do the trick. Gas in here, but how do I open this? I got a troublemaker here in the garage. <laughs> I tried to put gas in this here gas tank. I... So Alex can go from here to uh, Vancouver Island for a holiday. Yeah, is it because it's a boat I can float across the, instead of taking the ferry across there? Well, yeah, I, I, I hope you take your wife and your children. Or maybe you want to go on a honey, uh, you know, maybe a honeymoon for the second time. You know, that gas in there is probably so old, it's like moonshine. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> How do I get in there? <laughs> <laughs> but you were saying you like that one, right? It's a beautiful car. You should have a look inside. You know, Hans, apparently Queen Elizabeth sat in this car when she first got married. Really? Yeah, that's what they say. Huh. So, was this rope to tie up the queen when she first got married? Yeah, that's that's your dowry rope, do you think? Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, I picked myself up a battery, which is why I got the hatch open oh, okay, there. Yeah. I'm going to, hopefully later in this video, I'll crank this puppy over and see if it actually does anything. That's what I'm up to, though. Well, that is one beautiful old car. Oh, thanks. All right. New battery is in. I'll just snug that up a little bit, see if anything happens. I'll go up to the front of the car. Make sure, okay. Key on. Nothing. Actually, maybe I have to have my foot on the clutch or maybe there's a starter. Sometimes they have a starter button on the floor too. I'm just gonna fiddle around a little bit here. Detroit, pull reserve, mixture. That should be headlights, I think. Nothing. Well, I know it's a good battery. Hmm, strange. Well, it seems like I've got no power throughout the vehicle. Pulled the fuse box. And I've got a blown 35 amp fuse. 35 amp, that was gonna be something pretty big. Nothing's labeled. <laughs> but I guess we'll see if that does anything. I'll grab another fuse. It's a glass fuse, so it should be pretty easy to swap out. And I'll give it another try. Well, the fuse didn't do anything and it looked like it was for the uh, side marker and tail lamps. So I'm gonna crawl underneath here and see if I can see any wires that are disconnected. Yeah, maybe they had a fail safe in here where they could basically just un unplug, who knows? 
Just gotta trace the wiring and see what's going on. I must have some kind of power because whatever this thing is, when I turn it, I have a fan sound up at the front. Auxiliary fan. See it spinning in there. So that's working. So there is some power getting to the vehicle. It's just not getting anywhere else. That's probably directly wired to the battery, that's why. How frustrating. Hmm. Interior lights, passenger lights, nope. The only thing working is some random auxiliary fan. At least that's something. Okay, this is so weird. Auxiliary fan has stopped working. But now all of a sudden, I uh, still don't have headlights. Don't have horn. Turn for a second there. For a second there, it tried turning over. Of course, I didn't have the camera on. I'm gonna check the battery connections and try again. Okay, I figured it out. That isn't for the fan, that's the kill switch. Off and on, this is the kill switch for the battery. This is for the fan. That's for the fan. So, in theory, oh, hear that? That's the starter going, but the but the engine's not turning. But it does have a little bit more life than it did before. Uh, okay, so now at least I figured out how to get power to the vehicle. Don't have any rockin' tunes. Not yet, anyway. Maybe soon. But that's one step in the right direction. Let's check, the, see if the headlights do anything. Yep. I've got headlights. Okay, well, first step, figured out the electrical situation. But, still can't get the darn thing to uh to crank i'm just gonna make sure the uh starter isn't uh i might just give it a little bit of a tap and see if i can free it up beyond the spider webs lies the starter indiana jones that out of the way um it sounds like it's just freewheeling occasionally you can grab like a a broom handle or something give it a bit of a tap and it'll knock things back into uh, position. Don't know if that's gonna work in this case, but it's worth a try. I am just gonna give it a little tap a, a little firmer. Let's give it a little tap with a piece of wood. This might seem like the most backwoods way of doing this, <laughs> but you would be surprised sometimes Bits just get stuck. Okay, I'm gonna push my foot in on the clutch just in case. Ah, listen to that, it's turning. It is not stuck, I got the starter to work. Next stop, I think I'll put a little gasoline down the carbs. Dual carb, I'm gonna try a little bit of carburetor cleaner down here first. Normally you can prime your SU carb right there, kind of like an old motorcycle. That looks like it's missing the primer. I don't know if that's by design because they're linked or really what's going on. Um, hopefully I don't see a lot of fuel come spurting out of there. Um, there is no gas in the car right now, but uh, I'm gonna try a little carb cleaner and see if it takes spark. Okay, put a little gas in the carb. Give it a try. Oh, you hear that? Listen, it almost went. Oh, she wants to go. 
she wants to go. Aha! Well, it doesn't sound super great, but it lives. I'll try it again. Probably burnt off whatever gas was in there. But that's good news. I have an almost running engine. I'm gonna try a little bit more gas in the carb and see if I can get it to fire up again. Well, might need a little tune up, but it runs and that's better than it did uh, since 1990. Okay, so far, got a new battery, um, got some lubrication in the engine, got the starter to work, got the engine to start. Not bad for a first day's go at it. Um, check the other things out. Do we have horn? We have horn. Signal lights. Oh, well, I heard one pop out. I heard the, heard the trafficator on the other side pop out. There it goes. <laughs> There it goes, like a friendly little arm popping out the side to say hello. Howdy, I'm gonna turn this way. It's, it's one step better than sticking your arm out the window. So I guess next up for me, um, we'll be figuring out the fuel supply issue. A, it doesn't have any gas in the tank. That's part of it, but I don't want to put any gas in the tank until after I either had it cleaned um, or make sure that it's it's in good condition. Sitting that long, it should probably be cleaned out. Uh, I also bought a, uh, I'm just gonna smell it. She doesn't smell bad. You get a, a real smell off of bad gasoline and it doesn't smell like bad gas in there. I might've gotten lucky. But um, I am going to pull that fuel pump off and rebuild it. I bought a uh, fuel pump rebuild kit for it. I'm sure it's probably gummed up. So we'll give it a go. I'm just gonna try the, uh, this is a trafficator right there. It's basically like a pop out electric signal light that if you're English, you know what they are. If you're not English, you probably don't see them very often. I'll see if I can make it go. Boop. It's supposed to flash too. It's like sticking your arm out the window saying you're turning. <laughs> so I uh, haven't even washed it yet. It's still filthy, still dirty, fresh out of the storage facility. But all in all, I think that's a good first day with the vehicle. So next time uh, that I take her on this car, I'm going to see if I can get the fuel pump rebuilt, um, get it to run and idle. Um, we'll check the brake reservoirs, check the brake fluid, and make sure that's okay. And hopefully we can at least move this thing around. Once it's movable, it's a lot more easy to work on because you can turn it around and park it where you want it. Right now it's just a lump that uh, three of us pushed in here the other day. <laughs> so I hope you liked today's little update video, guys. Um, hoping to bring this car somewhat back to life, more than it is already and uh, then eventually tackle that busted door on the driver's side. So thanks for watching today's video. We'll see y'all soon and bye for now.